saw a deceleration in growth uh, after seven quarters of really good growth and corporate profit growth. Uh, we see input costs rising uh, and you know weakness in some of the, as Keith pointed out, the uh, uh, areas uh, that traditionally drive industrial activity like uh, Chinese demand. Uh, and also a little bit of a strengthening of the dollar. So as you know, Keith looks at the bottoming of the dollar and that starts to go up, that has a direct impact on the competitiveness and um, the, uh, the revenue growth of, uh, of the sector. Uh, and we'll look at a couple examples of that. Uh, and you know, basically, there's a lot of optimism around tax reform. The reality is the tax reform uh, doesn't incentivize CapEx in much the way that was expected. Like if you think about it, uh, you know, the after-tax cost of equipment actually went up because there's also a tax shield. Uh, many pieces of equipment were already expensed under Section uh, 179, bonus depreciation. Uh, the actual after-tax cost of equipment went up. Uh, in addition, though, the uh, you know tax on income came down. And when you look at the two as an offset, it pretty much had very little impact unless you had a very long life project with a very long depreciation schedule. Uh, so it, would, it wouldn't have been rational to have expected a, uh, a big uptick in CapEx based on tax reform, but that was what was embedded in a lot of the valuations that we saw. So, you know, uh, basically, it, it, you know, perhaps you don't cancel plans, but is it irrational to see them moderate off of all-time highs? And that's basically what we see. What we see on uh, slide nine, moderating growth, uh, higher, uh, higher sector um, input costs, particularly steel. Steel gets a lot of, um, you know, uh, attention because of the tariffs. But labor is also tight. We have a good quote on that from Oshkosh. Uh, coming up, we have uh, trucking is a big cost input. Uh, not only is labor tight in the broader economy, there's a whole bunch of things, hours of service related, electronic monitoring of uh, trucker hours that are driving significant X fuel uh, increases in trucking costs and a real con contraction in capacity. That's really biting this quarter uh, and, and uh, really in the first, first and second of 1H. Uh, and it's having a significant effect on uh, a lot of the inventory costs because those things get stuck into inventory. Um, and, uh, you know, that doesn't mix too well when we see a decelerating top line uh, growth rate. So if you see higher input costs, moderating growth, that's not that helpful. Um, so what you had going into 20, into basically first quarter earnings was expectations that were just out of line, right? Caterpillar, 3M, ITW, these are names that uh, are down year to date in part because of you know, elevated expectations, but also because I think it's worth noting, a lot of investors are, are what we call GE refugees, right? That they had to find uh, a place to go outside of GE. So if you look at the performance of the top 10, most liquid industrial names that have some correlation to keep tracking error down, right? For these long only guys, um, they benefited a lot. You see names like Cat and Deer really outperform in the last four months of 2017 uh, relative to the sector. It's not just tax reform, not just, it's, it's basically, I know I've met with them, people shifting out of GE where they don't know and looking for a, a safer place to be.